What's up guys, I'm KDuckWall and I'm going to be talking about some beginner mistakes that newbies make that will haunt them in the future. The first one is deciding whether it be sutras or divine spells. They are both perfectly fine, but each of them will have their own cons. Let's start with sutras. Sutras are great, but don't get me wrong, but they lack the stats factors such as damage that we will be talking about later. What sutras really do is up your practice speed, which means they can reach the realms faster than the average cultivator who focuses on all their main attributes. Sutras are great for people who want to receive perks quicker, such as achievement awards, and unlock missions, and more. However, cultivators who focus on sutras normally would get destroyed by people who are or stages who are run below theirs, who may have focused on damage. They will always find a hard time beating bosses who are of the same stage or below. Divine Spells Divine Spells are the best mana upgrades that will continue being great. Divine Spells is what gives you the damage output that is converted into Chi. Divine Spells are for people who want to absolutely demolish bosses and cultivators with ease. However, everything that sounds too good to be true will always have a bad. The bad being is that you would absolutely have atrocious cultivation speed. You will find that being stuck in the same stage for days would be pretty annoying, since that you want to fight other bosses. Some other cons is that you will not be able to unlock other perks at a rate that the people who practice sutras would. The market. The market is a great way to scam you out of your J's and jumps. You do not want to be pressured into spending them at the market. You see a G4 Void Gem on sale in the mystery shop? It's overpriced and you can get it for a cheaper price. Some things I would not mind is the black market, scriptures, and the phenomena. You can craft Void Gems with blueprints and the phenomena. However, it must be in the same stage as your forge. For example, if you wish to craft that G4 Void Gem, you must carry a G4 tripod. How do you get tripods? I highly recommend crafting them for materials you may have gotten from training, where you can then receive the blueprint from either the Phenomena or Guild's treasure in the blacksmith tab. You can also get techniques you may get from the market for free if you're at the tavern in the training. You should interact with the passerbys and answer the questions differently each day to possibly get something new. Bonus part for the tavern is that the wine fairy will give drinks that will distribute 60 points into whatever stats you like according to the order of your attributes. Partners! This one is going to be a fast one. Some people who oftenly do not give affection to their future partners which can actually be beneficial to them. Partners have a hidden boost that can help you. It can be a boost in J-boxes, relics, refined XP, and more. Technique Distribution Technique Distribution is important because it decides the future of your abilities. You want to upgrade them accordingly and not leave some abilities or techniques level 1 and the rest level 4 or 5. This is what promotes bad habits. I normally would have them maxed out because it doesn't make my techniques all clear in stats. Same goes for guild techniques and skill. You don't want to leave them all clear. You can either have them maxed one by one or keep them all even levels. Never each skill or technique all different in levels. Abode. For the abode, you can see that there are gems, food, wood, and iron. At the end of the day, you don't want to have the yield of a negative number, but a positive number. I would normally level them up so that the yield is equal to each other, or which one is you really want. However, this is the most important part. You want food, a lot of it, because each time you level up one, you will have an increase in servants, and you will need to take care of them with food. If you don't have any food, you won't be able to gain any. Another important factor is being storage full. In order to bypass that, you would really want is to use your glint dragon power, or you can use the speed of function. I recommend not using the jades, but just watching the ad to get over it. Fairchild. Fairchilds are really annoying to manage, because if you can't reach the threshold of a certain year, you will have to spend 9,999 gems, and then again and again. To just ease things out, you should just buy attainments. Attainment orbs, to be exact. The higher the better. I would also ask you guys to take your Fairchild to Fairy School to increase your stats. What Fairchild does is scavenge items and gives you a lot of items that may be beneficial to you. Thank you guys, it's Cute Duck Waddle and I'll be out. Just stay tuned for the next video. See ya.